Now for our story. In the dismal parlor of Stanton's elderly justice of the peace, Jesse Ward stood with Ben Calvert, taking the marriage vows. As she listened to the droning voice speak the words which would make her Ben's wife, the thing she'd been working toward for years, Jesse was oblivious to her surroundings. She was unaware of the dingy curtains at the windows, the frayed carpet, the depressing little bunch of dusty pink crepe paper flowers on the mantel. These tawdry details meant nothing to her. She was concerned only with the fateful words, I now pronounce you man and wife. In the little pause which followed, the pause which should have been filled with the solemnity of the first kiss, they could hear the thud of the newspaper on the wooden porch outside as the newsboy threw it and went whistling down the street on his bicycle. This was Jesse's wedding march. Then Ben turned to look into her face for the first time since they'd entered the room. He, too, had been lost in his own thoughts. But his were not thoughts of triumph. He had gone through with this thing because he had no alternative. He knew that Jesse would have followed out her threat to tell everyone in Wakefield of Kit's broken marriage and of the darkness surrounding the birth of her coming baby. How his enemies would have rejoiced. Wherever he went, there would have been veiled laughter, hidden sneers. His pride couldn't face it. And so he'd paid Jesse's price for her silence. She had won, at least for the time being. Then Calvert paid the fee and followed his bride out to the car, which was parked in front. Well, Jesse. You finally succeeded in becoming Mrs. Ben Calvert. Mm-hmm. But I suppose one might call it a Pyrrhic victory. Pyrrhic victory? I don't get it. Just something I remember from high school. It means a success gained at too great a cost. I see. But still a victory. Oh, definitely. I'm curious. Uh, tell me, how does it feel to be victorious? Well... I might ask, how do you feel when you just completed a deal successfully and achieved what you were after? Well, it would depend on what sort of methods I'd used to get what I wanted. Are you implying that my methods have not been sufficiently ethical? <laughs> That's good coming from you. <laughs> you know, this is an odd conversation for a bride and groom, even a cynical bride and groom to be having on their wedding morning. I suppose it is. But then we're not uh, an ordinary bride and groom. That's true, but on the other hand, we understand each other. We've been through a lot in the past. As a matter of fact, it seems to me it's quite possible this might turn out to be a rather successful marriage. You really mean that? You actually believe that with this sort of beginning, a marriage might turn out all right? Yes, I do. Assuming, of course, that you didn't hold it against me. I mean, the way it came about. If you could get over your resentment. Sometimes I think I don't understand women at all. Here you are after blackmailing an unwilling man into a sordid little wedding ceremony, cheerfully announcing that the marriage will be a huge success if you'll only not resent the fact that he was railroaded into it. Well, when you put it that way, it may sound rather raw. But aren't you forgetting, Ben, all the years which led up to this? When I was young, when I was in love with you. Maybe that's one reason why I didn't notice the sordidness, as you put it, of the ceremony. <laughs> Jesse, honestly, you you baffle me. I should think, considering that you seem to regard me as pretty much of a scoundrel, and you've made that very clear, that you wouldn't want to be tied up with me at all. Yes, I do think you're something of a scoundrel. But you're still Ben Calvert. And now, I'm Mrs. Ben Calvert. There are a lot of people in Wakefield who'll be forced to eat their words. And I'm not ashamed to say that gives me a great deal of satisfaction. In spite of the fact that this has hardly been the blissful occasion I used to dream about in my teens. Well, at any rate, you are going to have a wedding breakfast. At the hotel? <laughs> I must say, honeymooning in Stanton hardly strikes me as a thrilling idea. Well, uh, perhaps a more traditional honeymoon could be arranged after you've given me the present you promised. You mean Kit's address? You know that's what I mean. That was the bargain, wasn't it? 
All right, Ben, I'll tell you. Kit's living at Malibu outside of Los Angeles. Malibu? So that's where you found her. And what are you going to do about it? Bonin? Do you think it wise to distress her at this time? After all, she doesn't want you to know where she is. I, I hardly think it would be kind. Well, don't be nervous, Jesse. Don't be I'm nervous. I'm not nervous. I. Oh, for heaven's sake, let's drop the subject of Kit for the time being. An excellent idea. And beginning to agree with you, Jesse, we should indulge in a little make believe. Why not? So, we're going to have a bang up wedding breakfast. But the hotel isn't good enough for you, my sweet. We're going to have breakfast on the train. The train? Yes. I have tickets for California, Jesse. What's the matter? I should think you'd be pleased. <laughs> you seemed to enjoy your last trip to California, didn't you? That trip you made out of the goodness of your heart, just to put my mind at rest? What kind of a joke is this? Oh, it's no joke. Don't you like the idea? But I... I didn't bring any clothes. Not too bad. I told you to pack a bag. Yes, of course, but I thought we were only going to spend the night in Stanton. I only brought one dress. You needn't worry. That'll be plenty. It's going to be a quick trip. We'll just stay over a day and come right back. But why? Don't you like the idea? Wouldn't it make you happy to have Wakefield know you had a wedding with all the trimming? <laughs> What's the matter, Jesse? You look upset. Don't you like the idea of a nice little wedding trip? Don't try to be humorous, Ben. It doesn't become you. Just what do you intend to accomplish? I'm going to see Kit. What did you think? I think you're making a big mistake. Oh, you do? I fail to see how talking things over with my own daughter could be considered a mistake. Well, for one thing... She obviously isn't interested in talking to you. Regardless of that, there are a lot of angles to this thing that need clarifying. And I intend to see that they're brought out into the open. And you think you can accomplish what you want by talking to Kit? I can tell you this. I'm going to get this situation straightened out once and for all. Well, I wish you luck. But you seem to have forgotten that your daughter, like you, has a mind of her own. Kit will listen to reason. Remember, Jesse. Kit is a Calvert. Yes, but she's also partly a Bowman. And her baby will be, too. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm sure of. Nobody in Wakefield is going to have a chance to crow. And I believe that once Kit realizes what's been going on, she'll be willing to work the whole business out with me sensibly. And there are several items regarding your activities which won't please her very much. Well, if you're determined to see her, that's your affair, but leave me out of it. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, no, Jesse. You got yourself into this. You're not going to be let out so easily. You're not afraid of it, I. Why should I be? Oh, I was just thinking. It will be able to corroborate or not corroborate several important items of information you've given me. And I hope for your sake, Jesse, that there won't be any discrepancies between Kit's story and what you've told me. Because if there are, you may have cause to regret this day. Jesse Ward made no answer to Ben's last remark. There was silence as the car drew up before the station. While Ben went to make last-minute arrangements, Jesse sat in the waiting room, a well-groomed, still handsome woman, outwardly composed. But inwardly, Jesse was in a panic. What would happen when Ben found out that she had lied to him, that she'd not talked to Kit in California, and he would find out there was no way to avoid it now? But then she asked herself, what actually could he do? After all, she was Mrs. Ben Calvert. Nothing could change that. And yet, she felt uneasy. There had been no mistake about the threat in Ben's voice as he said, you may have cause to regret this day. And remembering Ben's treatment of his first wife, Jeffy experienced a moment of fear. <laughs> 